It's great to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation, and they're financial instructors. And this is important for you to know because today on the show, you're going to get a real download, a real education about what retirement and retirement planning looks like in the 21st century. And we'll be telling you ways that you can get an even greater download at the courses that Michael and Kirk, the team, teach throughout our community. And those are taught at local universities, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Eastern Michigan University, the University of Michigan, and Oakland University. They're also taught virtually, so stay tuned for ways that you can get registered Plus, you're welcome to like them on Facebook, the Retirement Education Foundation. Just do a search, make sure you follow them, and you'll be up to date on all they're doing to help you get in the know when it comes to retirement planning. Now, Kirk and Michael, I want to talk about some big risks out there. And you know, the word risk gets used a lot as we get closer to retirement. But you say that the financial services industry as a whole actually ignores a lot of huge risks that could pose some problems to our retirement. Tell me about this. Well, I think the first one we want to talk about, Megan, is uh, something called sequence of return risk. And it's something we reference. I I imagine we we probably say this every single show. We talk a little bit about sequence of return risk. And so what we really want to do today is dedicate this show to explaining sequence of return risk and how sequence of return risk impacts so many other variables related to your retirement and it is, it is by far the number one risk to today's baby boomers retirements, period. And it's not our opinion, it's academia that echoes the same message, this is the number one risk, but yet so few people actually know what it is. So why don't we quickly tell the, 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 the listeners exactly what sequence of return is, what risk is, and then we could talk about all the things we're going to talk about. So sequence of return is just like what it sounds like is the order in which your returns occur to you. So if you have an average return of 3%, 5%, 10%, that's great. But in what order did you get those returns? The the risk is that if you have negative returns early on in retirement, when you're taking money out of your portfolio, that's going to have drastic impacts on your income streams down the road. Michael, the, the number is if we have a major market event in the first five market or life event, by the way, in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. This sequence of return risk, this income planning, when do I take income from which accounts at what age? Because of sequence return risk is what will drive performance in retirement. It won't be what investments you choose or your average rate of return. So while most of our listeners, most of the community, most baby boomers are so focused on trying to choose the right stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, what investments or allocation to use, they're missing the most important variable to manage sequence of return risk, which is income planning. When, how, why, and where are the traps? And so Michael, it's it's the reason for uh, uh, the reason almost 10 years ago we started the Retirement Education Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization designed to help people in our community to and through retirement, understanding the traps, understanding how general rules don't apply to the majority of the people, how a one size fits all solution isn't going to give you the best outcomes and retirement plan to give you the confidence, the emotional confidence to get you through your retirement the way you have earned and should be able to enjoy your retirement. So we teach these classes and have been for a long time. They're seven-hour classes. They're taught at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State, uh, University of the Novi Campus, and Troy Campus, Oakland University. We have a learning center in, the, the foundation has a learning center in Livonia, And since COVID, we are streaming it live so people can attend in the safety of their own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to the charity, and you can spend seven hours, a 200-page textbook, and figure out how to build and construct your own roadmap to retirement. So if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. 
And we're glad you're here with us on the program today. I'm joined by Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about risks to retirement and not just any risk. We're talking about risks that the financial industry tends to ignore. But these are things, if you're not aware of them, if you don't get out in front of them, they can have a dramatic impact on the success of your retirement. So let's dive in here and talk a little bit more about what's coming up later in the program and what you want our listeners to walk away with. So I'm glad you you, you, you took me in that direction because I really want to, because there's a lot of variables associated with sequence of return risk. One, we want to explain what motivates our industry to ignore it, right? And so how they've created a lot of these rules that, by the way, many of them are now scrambling to adjust because these rules are no longer going to work. I think we're also going to talk about what the average retiree retires with and how if you aren't average, that just creates more traps with all these general rules and sequence of return risk. Michael, sequence of return risk impacts your longevity of your money, right? And we know people are living longer, right? I also think, Michael, what do we see often when we people coming to our class? So people always come to us and say, you know what? I went through 2008 and I didn't panic. I'm a good investor. I, I'm disciplined. I don't let my emotions take control. But it's a different stage of life for them now. Now they're retired. Now they're taking money out of their portfolio. And they're correct. The market will recover. It always does. But if you're taking money out while the market's down, you're going to impact its longer term impacts on your on your money now. It changes the game. That That is the trap. If you are pulling money out and the market goes down, it doesn't matter how much time you have. You're trapped because, well, what are you well, going to have 30, maybe 40 years in retirement, which is a long time. But it's different than when you were working and you were not pulling money out. Those market volatility events were sustainable because you weren't withdrawing, reducing the shares of what you had, so making it, therefore, more difficult to recover from. So- These are the things we're going to cover today. I hope you guys stick around. Again, it's all about trying to convince you why you should invest seven to hours of your time and attend a course at one of the major universities going through a 200 page textbook so you can be better prepared to avoid the traps and know how to build your own retirement plan. So if you'd like to register for one of our classes, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Glad you're with us on the Retirement Education Hour today. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to register for one of their upcoming courses, this is a, a deep dive into what it takes to plan successfully for a 21st century retirement. You can get registered by calling 800-240-8981. Or go to the website to register, retirementplanningedu.com. You can take the courses in person or virtually. They're held at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Oakland University, Eastern Michigan University, and Michigan State University. No buy campus, either a two-day course or a one-day course that's about seven to eight hours long. So again, call 800-240-8981 or online at retirementplanningedu.com. Now, Kirk and Michael, you're talking about something today that really has my attention and I'm sure the attention of our listeners because we're talking about risk to retirement. No one wants to hear there's a risk to the success of their retirement. But you say not only are there risks, but many in the financial services industry are ignoring these risks. And you started with something called sequence of returns risk. I want you to explain, give us a real life example of how that could impact someone's retirement. So Michael, being uh, our financial analyst and head of research, was able to help pull this information together and created a a really incredible uh, chart that we use in our classes. And we're also actually creating a white paper on this right now that should be on our website within the next two or three weeks. And what it illustrates is two different people retiring with a million dollars. So if two different people retire with a million dollars and anticipate they're going to pull out $50,000 a year to live on, 
right? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a 20-year period, starting with a million dollars, taking out $50,000 a year, but one of the portfolios has an average rate of return of over 10%. The other portfolio has an average rate of return of 4%. And what we wanted to see is which one was going to perform better. Now, many of you are probably saying to yourself, duh, <laughs> well, that's obvious. The one that has an average rate of return of 10% is going to do better. Well, that's why we illustrate it. They don't. In fact, the one that has a 10% average rate of return runs out of money in 17 years. And the one that only has a 4% average rate of return still has over $400,000 left 20 years later. And it's because average rate of return isn't what's going to drive the performance. It's the sequence of the returns that's going to drive the performance because we are pulling money out of the accounts, causing us to have fewer shares, making it more difficult to recover when we have those volatility events. That, did I do that okay, Michael? Yeah, you did. And it's hard to illustrate without pictures, isn't it? It is. And one thing to think about, too, is that if you have a 50% drawdown yep. in the first year and a 50% gain in the second year, a lot of people think, well, I lost 50 in the first year. I gained 50% in the second year. I must be back to even. Well, that's not the case. So if you had $10,000, lost 50%, you're down to 5000 gained 50% again. Now you're up to 7500 for a net loss of $2,500, or tw roughly 25%. So when you combine that with taking money out in those down years, you really, it takes more, you have to gain more than you lost to get back to even. Right, Michael, because if you lose 50 the first, you make 50 the second, you have an average rate of return of zero, right? On paper, correct. But, but from your a dollar return, perspective, you're, real return. you're a negative return. Yeah, exactly right. So now go through that exercise at home where just have a few years early where you lose a little bit. You don't have to lose a lot. Have a year that you lost, we had a bad year. We lost 17%. Then take the next year, we're in a recession. The next year you just lose mm, 3 to 5%. You're going to outlive your money now unless you significantly change how much you pull out of your accounts, which brings us to a whole different issue is what do we take out of our accounts? How much can we comfortably do it? take out of our accounts without panicking? And it's so interesting the percentage of people who are – either setting themselves up for a trap because of sequence of return risk, right? They're going to outlive their money or those people who are significantly underliving what they otherwise could be spending because they have no idea. There's too much unknown and your relationship with money is going to change. Anxiety and fear is what's going to drive your spending habits once you retire. And what makes this difficult is that the biggest unknown is the future market returns. No one knows if, if they're going to retire in a good period or a bad period. It, You're right. Regardless of your allocation, 20, 80, 60, 40, 75, 25, whatever it is, you don't know what your returns are going to be in the future. So without a detailed plan telling you when to take money, from what accounts to take the money from, you're exposing yourself to this risk. Which I think next segment, maybe we'll talk about the reason why our industry ignores this. I mean, this isn't new. Uh, you know, Wharton has been talking about this. Yale's been, Harvard, they've all been talking about this sequence of return risk for retirees for many, many years now. And it happens to be a perfect storm right now with the market at an all-time high, interest rates at an all-time low, and likely we're going to see interest rates begin to rise eventually. Those are all perfect storms for sequence of return risk and have and, and is why you see our entire the entire financial service industry right now. Go Google the 60-40 rule is dead. Go Google the 4% rule is in trouble. If you do that, you're going to see the entire industry right now scrambling, trying to figure out how do we come up with a simple solution to give people simple answers so we can stay profitable and scalable as a financial service industry. Right. I mean, you nailed it. Their goal is scalability and profit. That's it. They're a business. That's that's how they're operating. They don't typically care about the minutia of each individual person's needs and plans. Michael, it is the reason right there. These general rules and these traps where the financial service industry falls short for retirees is why we started this nonprofit charity over 10 years ago specifically to educate those within 10 years of retirement through retirement 
to avoid these traps? How can they have that freedom where they can evolve their relationship with money to let that money serve them and actually enjoy the retirement they've earned? And without this education, because they're not, our, the industry isn't going to teach you this. The talking heads, the articles, the experts aren't talking about this. Kramer's out there trying to tell you to stock pick and market time to success in retirement. They're not talking about this because it takes time, expertise. They don't have it. So this is why we teach these eight-hour classes at all the major universities. It's why during COVID, we're still teaching and streaming it so you can stay in your own home. All it costs is $29 donation. It's a donation to charity, and you can attend this eight-hour course, 200-page textbook, to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. There's much more straight ahead with Kirk and Michael. Stay tuned. It's great to have you with us here on the program. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to attend one of their courses, you're welcome to register online at retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. And if you'd like to follow all they're doing in the retirement planning space, be sure to like them on Facebook. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Michael, we're talking about risks to retirement today, especially risks that you say so many in the financial services industry are ignoring. One of them is sequence of returns risk. And you made a great case for why that's something we need to be aware of and how to protect ourselves from that. Why are so many people ignoring this risk? Well, it almost sounds like I set that up to have you ask me that question, Megan. <laughs> we did. And, and it's because it's such an important point because it's just not sequence of return risk. It's all the general rules that all of you have become familiar with, whether it's not teaching you and explaining sequence of return risk or explaining how social security is taxed and how the social security impacts the taxation on your other monies and how to appropriately plan for that or the 60, 40 rule or the 4% rule or even what order you should take your money out of your accounts, the probability, all these general rules that they keep coming up with, it all has to do and in intended based upon one thing, and that is revenue for the industry, the firm. They want to be as profitable as possible. To be profitable, you need to be scalable. It needs to be simple and repeatable, right? So to be able to educate you and build a comprehensive individualized plan for you that would require a lot of time and expertise and more staffing. If we come up with a simple rule that can apply to more people, we can meet more people, spend less time planning and have fewer people with the expertise that really does tax planning, income planning, estate planning. We can avoid the most costly aspects of, of, of the business. And they have been doing this for many, many years. And right now they're in super scramble mode because their rules that they've been having people use for a very long time no longer works. It no longer back tests on their special little software gadgets and Monte Carlo simulations and stress testing. It doesn't work anymore. So now they're all scrambling, pivoting, trying to find new solutions, new rules so that they can maintain some of the old rules, which is crazy. But look, it's a business. It's about scale, size, volume, transaction, right? And so they're going to do it. They're going to find a way to do it, to make it one size fits all. And it's going to cost a lot of people. And it doesn't necessarily cost people to outlive their money. This isn't all about scare tactics here, right? It's for many people, what it costs you is the inability to live the retirement you otherwise could have if you knew how much you really could spend. So many of you are going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending because you don't know how much you can afford to spend because they've convinced you you've got to protect your principal, right? So you see 
protecting that principle, Michael, what does that do for them? It makes it simple, right? It does. I mean, for some people, protecting principle, leaving those funds to beneficiaries, heirs, is a goal. And if that's the case, fine. Great. But for a lot of people, they want to spend down their principle. They've saved all this money working all those years. Now they want to spend that money in retirement to enjoy retirement. So for them, protecting their principle is not a goal for them. So when I when we put it in these terms, Michael, when we say to you, do you really want to leave the three million dollars you saved or million dollars you saved for your children? Is that your goal to leave that much? For some people, the answer is yes. Some people want to leave as much wealth. They want more wealth. Well, great. Then there's strategies and planning to be done. But many people, their only concern is don't let me outlive my money. So when I phrase it this way, they are much more comfortable with it. How about a controlled spend down of your principal with assurities that you can't outlive your money? That is what most people are searching for. But our industry isn't providing that. They're telling you to protect your principal so you will self-regulate reducing the amount of planning and work the advisors and the industry has to do and provide for you. Does that make sense? It, exactly. And to back it up a little bit, I'm sure we mentioned Monte Carlo. I'm sure everyone who's talked to a, a planner or a financial advisor has seen this. It's that dial of probability outcomes that tells you you are 65% likely to not outlive your money. It's a 65% success rate. Well, like we said before, we are at an all-time low interest rate. We're, at a, we're nearing we're at all-time high stock market. So the future returns are not great. When you add those things into their back test, it no longer works. Now, instead of 70% or 75% successful, which aside, it's not even a great success rate anyways. No. But it's good enough for them, apparently. Well, well it's good enough. And that's why people underspend what they could spend because it's not good enough to give them confidence, the emotional. Right. But now confidence. it's 50% or 40% successful. So right. like you said, they're changing their rules. Instead of 60-40, you're going to start seeing 75-25, 75% stocks, 25% bonds. So instead of doing the real planning that takes time like we talked about, they're just changing the rule of thumbs, having people take on more stock risk, and self-regulating. It's so crazy, Michael. So just so everyone knows, J.P. Morgan projects, well, let's just say a number of major financial service companies have projected a 60% allocation to stock, 40% allocation to bond, will perform about 3%-ish over the next 10 years which is not going to work for retirees, that barely is going to keep up with inflation. Correct. And it's not just a guess. They're taking current valuations and yes. doing a lot of statistical analysis to figure out what will be the expected future returns based on these underlying allocations. This is causing people to be more emotional about their investing because they're telling people to take on more risk. That's what they're saying. Take on more stock risk, 75% stocks, 25% bonds, which is going to cause, and let's talk about this next segment, more anxiety, more people trying to time and maybe stock pick or feel their way through this so they can feel comfortable. And, and this results in really, really bad outcome, more sequence of return risk. And so Again, this is why we're teaching the classes, to help people avoid these mistakes and learn how to develop your own custom individualized retirement plan for your situation, because yours is different than everybody else's. This is why we spent eight hours in a class, the 200-page textbook. We teach it at all the major universities, and since COVID, we are streaming this so you can stay in your home and attend the course. If you'd like to register, it's $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And there's much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Will the presidential election results impact your retirement? Find out with a free guide from Kurt Cassidy at seniorplanningadvisors.com. That's seniorplanningadvisors.com. Always a pleasure to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. You can get more information and register for one of Kirk and Michael's upcoming courses. These are taught at local universities, or you could even take an online course from the comfort of your own home. Simply call 800-240-8981. Or you can register online. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. If you're on Facebook, think about following Kirk and Michael at Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about risks in retirement, and these are risks that 
Kirk and Michael tell us the financial services industry tends to ignore. You know, when it comes to general rules and we talk about all of this, the lack of planning, why does that happen so often? And what can we do about that, Kirk and Michael? Well, I think, Megan, because we have these sequence of return risks, and I think people may not know it by name, but once they start playing with the numbers, they start identifying that as a risk. And then we have general rules that, you know, they're really sending people home for retirement saying, hey, take your money out of your savings first, then your IRAs last. That's your plan. And take 4% a year out. Here you go. Go home. Good luck and protect your principal. There's your retirement plan. Oh, and by the way, here's a dial that says you're going to be 78% successful. Hope you feel good with that. As a result, what happens is people, their relationship with money changes and they get much more anxious and nervous in retirement. I tell people all the time in our class, and I, I think I say it on the show too quite a bit, old people aren't cheap. Older people are scared. They're scared because A, we know the first cognitive ability we will lose is our mathematics. And you have a 50% chance to having significant cognitive impairment as you age. That's the numbers. So connecting the dots, understanding the math will become more difficult. And without a plan, you are going to be unsure of what to do and when to do it. And so as a result, we have a lot of people truly underliving what they otherwise could spend. We have people who are allowing short-term market events like elections, pandemics, financial crisis, allowing these short-term market events, Brexit, to dictate if I retire, what I'm, if I'm going to go on vacation, what I'm spending, whether I'm going to do a home improvement or well, whether I'm going to sell or not in the market. And the worst thing you can do, the single worst thing you can do is sell when the market is being volatile and down. That is the number one worst thing you can do. And unfortunately, 35% of people over the age of 65 did that, just did that because of COVID, Michael. 35% of people did that at the bottom. What do they do? When do they get back in, Michael? So to clarify, those were Fidelity investors, Yep, a study you. from Fidelity. Michael always by the books. He wants to make sure we get everything perfect. That's good. That's why we got them. They were Fidelity investors. Yep. And now, so they've sold which, it, they've which sold just it to the Just be clear that $7 trillion of investors, by the way, is at Fidelity. Yes. To yes. put it in perspective. Go ahead. Sorry. So now they sold at the bottom. Now they're scared. Then the stocks recover. And now what are they going to do? Buy back into the top? These people are still scared. They missed the greatest bull run in history. That was the best 50 year right after the crash we've ever had in history. They would be up. They would be up. Their portfolios would be up. Now they're 20, 30 percent behind, 40 percent behind. What are they going to do, Michael? I mean, now they're like you like we said earlier, their risk about living their money is now 75 percent higher. It is. And so we had this in our private practice happen recently where a doctor came in and he was very proud. Michael, tell a story because it was your it was your a uh, client you're working with. So he came in, he was very proud of himself. He said, I'm an epidemiologist. He saw COVID coming. He he predicted that we were undervaluing the, the fears and he sold everything in February. He went to cash. And then obviously the market crashed in March. He was very proud of himself. What good timing, Mike. So it was great timing. Yeah. He did a great job. Now I was meeting with him in October mm -hmm. and he was still in cash. And of I course. said, okay. So when you, cause he said, oh, well, we're gonna see a second crash. Now he's seeing he's seeing ghosts now. He predicted the first one. He thinks he can keep doing it. And I said, okay, so you you do realize now the market's above where you sold it at. So if you would have just held on, you would have been in a better spot today than when you sold. Yeah. When's he going to get back in? What was his comment? So his comment was when the dust settles or something <laughs> to the effect of when there's a vaccine and this all calms down. So, so okay, so let's add that together, Michael. So what he's going to do is he's going to wait for – the dust to settle. I don't know what that means, but okay, let's call it, he said, when there's a vaccine. Okay, well, we're about to get a vaccine, and where's the market right now? So the vaccine news came when we were at an all-time high. <laughs> People just assume that, oh, well, if there's something like a, a pandemic going on, the, the market must be down 40%. I'll get back into the bottom, and I'll ride it all the way back to the top. Well, that's not the case. So this guy, who he got it right on the front end. You have to be right twice for him, unfortunately. So, Michael, this is so, so common, and one of the reasons it's common is because people don't have a plan. 
Yeah, I mean, we don't talk about our per- personal practice very often, but not one of our clients, a thousand clients, over a billion dollars were responsible for. Not one client panicked. Not one p- client went to cash because they all have plans, all have plans to pivot and take income for them when there is market volatility. They don't worry. They're not going to outlive their money. They know that. They've been educated. They understand it. This is the freedom you all are all searching for and why we teach the classes. You've got to have the freedom to understand what, when, and how, not just in spreadsheets, but also summarized. So as you get older and it gets more difficult, you don't panic. Because if you're listening to the experts, the pundits, we call it the wall of worry, another uh, chart we put up in the class of all the experts, icon, you name the expert. Literally, you name the expert from 2010 through 2018 or or 17, we're all calling bottoms. Soros, all of them, they all were calling bottoms. They're all on TV saying, I'm guaranteeing there's a 90% chance we're going to see a 50% reduction in the stock market. And I'm sorry, calling tops. I'm sorry. They, they're all calling tops. I'm tops, sorry. Correct. sorry. They're all calling for these scary things to happen. And aside from these people, there are events that happen every single month that are going to scare people. Elections, recessions, natural disasters. I mean, you name it, it's going to happen over the course of your retirement. You Excellent can't live point. your retirement that way. Excellent point, Mike. Mike's point, you're going to have an event every three to seven years that's going to be major, whether it's recession or whatever it is. And this is why you need to educate yourself, why you need to spend seven hours in a classroom. When we teach these classes at all the major universities, and we are now, because of COVID, streaming it so you can stay in the safety of your home. Seven hours, 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. There is much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Will the presidential election results impact your retirement? Find out with a free guide from Kurt Cassidy at seniorplanningadvisors.com. That's SeniorPlanningAdvisors.com. Glad you're with us. If you're ready to get registered for one of the courses that are taught by Kirk, Michael, and the team, you are welcome to get registered. You can go to RetirementPlanningEDU.com or you can call 800-240-8981. We sure are glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. We've been telling you how to get registered throughout the show. Remember, it's just a $29 donation. That donation goes to charities that Kirk and Michael and the team are passionate about. So call today, 800-240-8981, or visit the website, retirementplanningedu.com. And like them on Facebook, simply search Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Michael, as we've talked about some of these retirement risks that the financial services industry, by and large, tends to ignore, I want to remind you of something that I hear you say quite often here on our show, and that is our listeners are not the average investor. They're not the average retiree. And you say this is why so many of these rules of thumb, these general retirement planning rules just simply don't work, right? It's a great question, Megan. And I know I say this often and it's really helpful to explain because I think people people don't recognize that if you have resources saved for retirement, you aren't the average. They're they're not talking to you. The Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramseys, they're not talking to you people that have saved and have significant amounts of money for retirement. And significant, I know, is subjective, but let's put it in perspective. We have almost 40% of baby boomers generating 90% of all their income from Social Security. That's it. That's all they have. The average baby boomer is going to retire with less than $200,000 for retirement. That's it. That's all they have. And so and we know who our listeners are. We know who attends our class. The average person attending our class has a investable assets of over a million dollars. They tend to have college degrees. They tend to be super bright, often do-it-yourselfers, professionals. Look, if you have these types of resources, you're not average. And these general rules, these one-size-fit rules are going to do nothing but get you into trouble and or going to prevent you from living the retirement you otherwise could have by educating yourself and not educating on investing. 
investing is not what's going to drive your performance in retirement. It isn't going to be in the investments you choose. I know this is counterintuitive to everything you've been conditioned to believe by our industry. I get it. But it's it's when you take income from which accounts at what age to eliminate sequence of return risk is what's going in tax efficiency is what's going to drive your performance in retirement. And so you're not average. So stop following these general one size fits all rules. And if you do have wealth with that wealth comes some responsibility. You need to foster that wealth and take care of that wealth. And also, by the way, make sure that the surviving spouse, if you're married, is protected properly and has a plan in place to prevent making mistakes. And then your children are prepared and planned. There's a plan in place to prevent those mistakes, which are numerous mistakes we talk about in the class, Michael. We see those mistakes all the time. I mean, so typically we'll see that one spouse or the other is in charge of the finances, which we have found is healthy earlier on in the relationship. But as you get older in retirement, you both need to be aware of what's going on. One of you, I mean, the sad fact is one of you will likely be single at some point when the other one passes away. You both need to understand what the plan is for finances in case that happens. Yeah, you don't want to leave an 82-year-old spouse that hasn't been taking care of the finances with a list. And then the kids, I a mean- list isn't going to do it. We know the research tells us that roughly 70 to 80% of all wealth that gets passed on to the kids is gone in the first generation. So if yeah. you're passing on wealth to your children, you want them to be good stewards if they don't know what the plan is, they are more likely to waste that money. You want to know what the IRS statistic is? That 85% of children will take all of the money out of the 401ks and IRAs within nine months and blow it. Which That's is in the number. incurring massive taxes. And how much money, uh, yeah, t taxes, lifestyle change, creating all kinds of problems. But, w Michael, how many trillions of dollars of wealth is transferring from the boomers to the next generation. I don't have the number off the top I do. of my head. You want to know it? Yeah. $75 trillion is going to transfer. And a lot of that will be wasted. You know what's funny? The other thing, Michael, is so we want to make sure people recognize you're living longer. Look, look, a 65-year-old male, I know people don't want to hear us when we tell you this. This is the number. 65-year-old male is going to live on average to 86 years old. 86 and ish, 86 ish, I said. I mean, a 65 year old female is 88 ish years old, right? You have a 50% chance one of you are going to live until about 93, 94, and a third of you live, over a third of you are going to live into your 90s. 50% of you are going to have cognitive issues. Almost 70%, I think it's 68% to be exact, is going to need some sort of long term care assistance. That Medicare doesn't cover, by the way. Medicare doesn't cover that. All right. So you're not average. You're going to live longer. And you, to have the freedom that you have earned, you need to be educated with the plan. Michael, this is so hard for people because primarily because a lot of people don't realize that, that they have more wealth than most, right? We, we meet people all the time, two, three, four million dollars. Oh, we're average. No, you're not average. You're a one percenter. They don't like when we say that, but you are. <laughs> Based on if, if you go home and like we've talked about before, Google what is the average retirement savings for a boomer for baby boomers, it's roughly two hundred thousand dollars or so. Suppose for a lot of you who you get your jobs, you put your head down, you work hard and save for forty years, when you pick your head up, you have a million dollars or more saved. Yeah. And now the issue is well, how do I maximize what I've what I've saved my whole life for. And and how do you do it when it, you have an industry that, that, I get it, focuses on the average general rules and scalability? Well, you do it by education. Education, not about investing. It, financial literacy specific to retirement planning. Very different. Income planning, tax planning. There are so many tax dollars to be saved if you just know what order to take your money out from which accounts. Literally, just changing the order of when you take money out of which accounts will extend the life of your money. In many cases, we show examples 10, 15, 20 years. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars just understanding the brackets and when and how to take money. You need to invest eight hours of your seven, eight hours of your time. Make a $29 donation to charity and attend one of our classes at any of the major universities. Or you can, if you're concerned about COVID, stay home and we will stream the seven-hour class live to you in your home. 
If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael, straight ahead. Will the presidential election results impact your retirement? Find out with a free guide from Kirk Cassidy at SeniorPlanningAdvisors.com. That's SeniorPlanningAdvisors.com. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. We've been spending the hour talking about some of the big risks that face you in retirement, and these are risks you may not know about. Why? Well, simply because the vast majority of the financial planning industry ignores them. That means they pose an even greater risk to you. So let's talk about Kirk and Michael. If we're not learning about these risks from the majority of the financial advisors out there, how do we get out in front of these things? Well, you need education. And and the challenge for most of you is there's no shortage of resources to get information, right? At our fingertips, we have Google. And you will find plenty of opinions out there. Everyone who thinks they're an expert, you watch TV and you got Kramer telling retirees to stock pick and market time their way to retirement, which is insane. Just newsflash, and I'm not picking on Kramer. He's very entertaining, but he has underperformed the S&P 500 by over 100% since the year 2000. Just be on the record. So look. It's going to be up to you to be able to understand how to filter what we call the noise, the the experts, everyone who's writing a book that they didn't really write, someone else wrote for them, and they just paid $20,000 and put their name on it, right? That's what our industry's filled with, salespeople. The barrier to entry is so low. So it's, it's the exact reason, Megan, Michael, we started this nonprofit organization almost 10 years ago now to teach these classes at all the major universities. It's to help people to understand not only where the traps are, because we can bring our own private practice experiences of the relationship people have with their monies, the financial behavior they have that changes as they retire, approach retirement throughout retirement. We can take all of these experiences of helping thousands of people and then bring it to a classroom with some bias, clearly, but we, we primarily stick to the data. They're, and we source the data, academically driven data, right? Numbers, statistics to give you. For example, we know that every 3.2 years in retirement, you're going to have an unexpected expense you didn't budget for. Has anyone ever told you that? Okay, how about this? We can also tell you that 66% of you are going to spend more money in the first five years of retirement than you spent the last five years you were working. I know many of you think you're going to spend less because, again, you're listening to people who are talking to the average retiree. You're not average. You don't have less than $200,000 and getting the majority of your income from Social Security. So you're not going to live on less in retirement. I'm telling most, that is probably the biggest uh, mistake early in retirement we see, people underestimating what they need and then scrambling to figure out what they should do and whether they made a mistake or not once they retire and realize, oh, I'm spending more money. Oh, and by the way, you are going to spend a heck of a lot less money when you're around 78, 80 years old. Your spending patterns will significantly decrease, but then we have health care risks. So you have to make sure that there's a plan in place for health care. Right. So, Michael, that's what we're teaching in the class. And some of these traps are driven by our own our own emotions. So people who are still working, we'll we'll meet with people and tell them, look, why are you still working? You have enough according to what you want to spend. I love or, this one. or why aren't you spending more? You can be spending a lot more. And they say, well, because I don't want to outlive my means today and regret it when I'm 85 or 90 because they haven't built a long term plan. There is no like. Above your bed, there's no flashing light that's going to go bright red to yellow and start flashing, telling you, hey, you've got enough. You've got enough. You can retire now. You guys build these excuses in your head. There's a real, we're telling you, we, can, we, we teach you to better understand why you're behaving with your money the way you're behaving, right? I love the excuse, I'm going to wait until Medicare kicks in to retire because I need health care. Like, somehow Medicare is free. It's not, <laughs> right? Or- I'm going to, I, I don't know, I'm going to retire 63, 65, I don't know, 68. Well, what's going to drive that decision? Well, when I feel like I have enough, 
Well, what's going to make you feel that way? Well, there's no one, God's not going to come down if you believe in God and tell you, my children, you have enough, my child, you have enough to retire. You're not going to outlive your money. There's none of that. And these general rules aren't making the general population, everybody else feel comfortable that they can live the retirement they want. And as a result, people work longer than they have to or spend less than they can typically. And it's sad because you never know. Sometimes you can go out on your own accords and sometimes you're forced out. Sometimes you have a health event. Sometimes you're released by your employer. Michael, I love it. You keep hitting on these great points. Like, like you get to choose when you get to retire. And some people do, but unexpected retirements are so common, right? Health events, recessions, pandemics, job cuts. You might not get to choose. So why are we putting off planning when you get closer to the date you're going to retire is insane because you may not get to pick that date, right? And then even if you do, when you retire and you have a, a window to go do things, travel, sp- sp- spend time with family, go do the, buy the things you want to buy. You have a, a set window for that. No one knows how long their window is. But there is a window out there. You might have until you're 65, till you're 70, 75. But if you push that out too long because you're afraid to pull the trigger and retire because you don't have a plan in place, that's an issue. Michael, so many people struggle, particularly men, recognizing how old they are, right? You're, You're 63, you're 65. And, well, they don't perceive to be that age, right? And so... As a result, they think this is going to keep, they have a huge window of time. We've lost, I think we've lost 10 people now in the last six months in their 60s, Michael, 60s, people dying unexpectedly, not just from COVID, by the way. So we we don't know when our window's going to close. You better do the things you've been serving money to be able to do your whole life when you can do them. So again, we're going to encourage you, invest seven, eight hours of your time. We teach classes either a full day Saturday or two evenings. We're teaching at all the major universities, U of M, University of Michigan, Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, Oakland, in our learning center in Livonia. And we are streaming these classes because of COVID so you can stay in your home and we will teach you the class while you're in your home. A 200-page textbook. All you have to do is donate $29 to charity. And if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.